Goblin Slayer is a title released at the end of 2018, and upon its run, it gained quite a popularity and success in the anime community. I guess you're right. The show starts with a blue eyed blonde lolly that registers at the adventure guild for a quest. It's not exactly what I was expecting for an anime called Goblin Slayer. That's right. But hey, I like women, and she herself admits she's an adult. And now that I'm an adult, I want to become an adventurer and help out as many people as I can. I guess she's officially open for business after all. She suddenly gets approached by a group of adventurers that are on a quest to kill some goblins and need a healer for their party. My adventuring party's missing a healer, but we've got an urgent quest to tackle. Now they're all beginners with no experience, preparation or scouting done before entering a goblin lair. Yeah, this is definitely gonna work. I mean, they don't even have healing potions. By the way, is this like a fantasy game world? It's never specified what kind of reality our characters find themselves in. They are called adventurers, they are going on quest. They have no level, but they have stamina and health potions. This sounds like an MMO alternative game world scenario. So many shows lately like Overlord, No Game No Life, SAO, Lock Horizon, How Not to Summon the Demon Lord, The Time of God Reincarnated as a Slime, <sighs> The Rise of the Shield Bearer, and all that shit. They all have brief explanation at the beginning on how they ended up in this MMO real life fantasy. But I guess Goblin Slayer just uses some perks of this highly popular trend to simplify the anime and make it more similar to what's hot on the market right now. Nothing new under the sky, I guess, but let's return to our story. So a party of rookies enter a goblin lair with no plan of strategy. No wonder they get ambushed and surrounded by the enemy. I gotta say though, how hard can it be to kill a 3 foot tall creature? Strength in number and all, but even the show acknowledges how weak a goblin really is. <laughs> Come on, what's the matter? At this rate, even a goblin could take you. Oh, damn it! But they're a bigger specimen too, so I digress. Now here's the part where the anime started a little bit of a controversy. As the males, goblins kill. But the girls, they torture and rape. It's not explicit or anything, but still visually powerful. These are heavy subjects and it does have some shock value, even for anime standards. As our blonde little mage is left alone, scared, covered in blood and surrounded by the goblins, it was about time for an epic introduction of the main character. I am Goblin Slayer. He makes quick work of the remaining goblins and shows no mercy for anyone, even the children. The way he lays traps, uses the environment to his advantage, and incinerates his opponents reminds me a lot of Judge Dredd from the new Dredd movie. He always keeps his helmet on, he barely even speaks, and as of now even has a blonde female sidekick that is young and inexperienced. Later on you also never get to see his face, he is always hidden from the audience. Inside the second episode we learn that the main character lives on a farm with a big breasted childhood friend anime stereotype. She is obviously in love with the bastard, but he pretends not to care or understand her feelings. Also, I got to address the CGI. Don't think that it's not noticeable that Goblin Slayer armor is like the only thing that is not animated, just like the rest of the show. No idea why they made that decision, but it ended up looking reasonable and sometimes even impressive. Let's take a closer look at our protagonist for a moment. Now he's the silent, broody, emotional damage type, and it's no wonder he's getting all the kitties. Honestly, you were much closer to dying than any of the rest of us were, right? And this poor girl, oh no, Goblin Slayer, blubbering, she was a real mess. What are you doing? You promised you would tell him that! Um, please wait! What is it? It's just good work today. Yeah, you too. Oh. You did so well. So, Orc Folk. What is it now? Well, we took on a new quest, so, um, you know. It's possible we'll ask for your help. I'll think about it. Uh, you 
don't do that. We'll be going now. Good morning. Morning. It looks like today's gonna be a pretty hot one. No surprise, I guess. It is summer. Yeah. Oh, wow, I'm starving. Please. Will you help? I don't know who else to ask. Player. Besides that, he has an entertaining personality, which definitely comes as a surprise considering he's always covering his face with a helmet and barely says anything. With the little interaction he has, I notice a charming sarcasm, similar to the one of Geralt of Rivia from the Witcher series. Not that I mentioned that he kinda is a Witcher, always preparing traps, hunting monsters, acquiring knowledge on the creatures he's fighting, scanning the battlefield, keeping himself distant from others. The Goblin says a more complex Catan than you might think at the beginning. He has many traits similar with other work of fiction, and yet he's a genuinely interesting person. I see. Congratulations. It's thanks to you. Without all your help, I never would have gotten this far. I didn't do anything. Of course you did. You saved me the first time we met. Once we're done slaying these goblins, you'll go on another adventure with us. And remember, there will be no water torture. Got it? Or setting them on fire. Or poisoning them. No poison? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Very well. Uh, he actually he agreed. agreed. <laughs> now before I go any further, I gotta address the number of episodes this anime has. As I checked, we only got 10 or rather 11. Only that the last one is a recap of the story and uses the same clips we've seen before. What happened? This anime was very popular and it had good animations. So why fell short of the usual 12 episodes? I'm not gonna forget about this when we get back. I guess I'm a little disappointed because I wanted more, but me complaining about it won't change anything anyway, so let's go back to what matters. Big fat titties. These are like G cups or something. I thought the peasant redhead childhood friend had huge jugs, but look at that beef. How can they even walk straight? Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, the goblin slayer takes his lolly on a few quests, until the main plot kinda kicks in, as a group of adventurers approach the protagonist. Apparently there's a big bad demon lord, or whatever, and a bunch of lolly with breast implants are fighting him. Long story short, they need his help with some goblins. I like this in fact, that the big epic fight of the century is being fought somewhere else and the protagonist only cares about his petty shitty goblin quests. It is refreshing to not have the whole world depend on the main character. What I also find out of the ordinary is that he's not overpowered. He makes mistakes, he gets injured and even beaten down a few times. If it wasn't for his friends, he would have died for sure. Having the Goblin Slayer not be an overpowered cat is a breeze of fresh air, and honestly, what it seems to be the trend for a couple of years. Let's talk about his party for a few seconds. We've got the Drunken Dwarf, which is one of the most obvious stereotypes in fantasy genre. I guess it was a no-brainer. We have a dwarf, let's make him a drunk, what else? Then we have some lizard man, warrior, summoner mage, that's obviously symbolizing a Native American shaman. And last but definitely not least, an elf to spice things up a little. So this is the new wife we were supposed to fantasize about. She doesn't have much personality, if you know what I mean. You dwarves have as much imagination as the rocks you work. Always convinced you're the ones who are right. Ha! Huh? And what do you know of the world? With a heart as small as your chest is flat. <laughs> At least I'm not barrel shaped like your dwarf women. I think you mean voluptuous. No, please. But that's part of her charm. We have lollies, mills, childhood friends, hot co worker, and now a flat chested tsundere to add to the goblin says harem. Uh, I mean, the cast of characters. I think he passed out. Having said all that, I was pleasantly surprised on how effective and useful the other adventures are. Many of the battles would have been impossible for the protagonist to win without a decent party backing him up. He made the action more engaging as I found myself in fear that the main character might actually die a few times. It's not just mindless slaughter or overpowered techniques, 
the anime actually manages to present a struggle in trying to defeat unpredictable enemies in uneven numbers. I give Gummy Slay a lot of praise for more original and somewhat realistic approach regarding action scenes, where the anime underperforms is the main story, as of there is any to speak of. The protagonist wanders from one quest of killing goblins to another, with no personal purpose rather than to eliminate those pests. A sentiment that I can sympathize with considering the atrocities those creatures commit against the weak. Not to forget the past of having witnessed the horrors of goblin attack, he saw his sister beaten to death and raped by goblins. I don't think it can get more personal than that. What I don't really quite understand was his memories regarding his mentor. There seems to be some old goblin of all things. This is animated on how he trained or what exactly happened after the raid on his village. Only dispersed information here and there. The scene where he was answering riddles from the goblin in a cave struck me in resemblance with the scene from The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. You know, when Bilbo meets Gollum for the first time. The funniest and somewhat disturbing part is that they even have the what's in my pocket riddle. That's a direct ripoff from the movie. Finally answer me this, what am I carrying in my pocket? <sighs> Your answer. Not to mention the title of one episode is literally there and back again which is the title of the book Bilbo writes. I like how starting episode 7 we get the disclaimer, as if the show until now had no controversial topics to speak of. A little too late if you ask me. At this point the viewers have already figured out by themselves to be discreet regarding this title. Overall Goblin Slayer is a captivating anime that delivers on its premise and more. Killing Goblins is the main focus of the show and we get plenty of just that. The action was also executed skillfully, as luck, tenacity, intelligence were our protagonist's main weapons of choice in dealing with his enemies. Also, as I've previously mentioned, the secondary characters do get plenty of chances to shine. They are the reason the Goblin Slayer triumphs against impossible odds. So in that regard, the show has decent character development. The main character may seem passive while others are talking, but he does follow the conversation and has a rather sarcastic manner to respond. You're wrong if you think you can step foot in my fortress and live. Oh, so you're not a goblin? Are you being serious? He's an ogre! You've heard of them! No. Bastard! The art style is decent, animations are good, and the show has some fun moments here and there. The only problems are the structure and the main story. The whole anime is kind of episodic, going from one side quest to another, with no main mission for the whole party to accomplish, but rather just the Goblin Slayer's Vendetta. The anime kept me engaged and left me wanting for more. Consider that cliffhanger. Goblin Slayer gets an 8 out of 10. I definitely recommend it, but again, you will be exposed to some gore and violence, so take that in consideration before trying it yourself. I want to help make it too. Sure. Oh. What about you? I guess I'll taste it. Why not? Nay. 